Hi friends. So we are back again to this classroom where we learn about the climate, especially the climate in India. And the other day we just casually mentioned about the different types of climate that we experience in our country. Some places it is so hot, some places it is so cold, some places during the day very hot but during the night very cold, or some places they are day or night the temperature is somewhat same and on the mountain tops the temperature is high sorry temperature is low so like that throughout the india we experience different type of climates so today let us see about the uh, under the topic climatic controls what are the mm -hmm. facts that are controlling the climate of a place climate of a area. So there are six climatic controls are there that are determining the climate of a place. So we shall see today what are those six elements that are controlling or they are called climatic control which are the six climatic controls that is what we are going to see today. So let us see the first one is latitude. Pressure and wind system. And number four is distance from sea. Then number five is ocean currents. The latitude means 
the uh, distance that is covering from equator. As we go, we have different latitudes are there. So we have different latitudes are there. And the equator is not in the middle. So it may come somewhere here. So the equator from the equator latitudes to the north and to the south. So the highest amount of solar energy received is in the equator region. So in this equator region they receive the highest solar energy. So as we go up to the north the amount of sunlight becomes lesser and lesser. And as we come down to the south the southern hemisphere then also as we move away from equator the amount of solar energy is less and less. So that is what one day the climate is decided by the latitude. So here the temperature will be called equator temperature, equator climate. And as we move from here sunlight is less that means the temperature will become lesser and lesser. It will become cold. So in the polar region and so on, in the polar region north, this is south, so both polar regions will be very cold because they will see very less sunlight. Then as a result, air temperature decreases from the equator towards the pole. So as we move from equator to the poles, to the south as well as to the north, the sunlight becomes less and less and if the sunlight is less then the temperature becomes the pressure becomes less the temperature is decreasing where there is high sunshine sunlight because of the heat the pressure increases the air expands and the pressure becomes high but here as we move down the temperature is less pressure is less therefore the temperature comes down then as one goes from the surface of the earth to the higher altitudes the atmosphere becomes less dense and temperature decreases so that is about the uh, latitude now let us see the second fact that is altitude you can also follow in your textbook page number 27 so, so from the face of the earth, from the surface of the earth, if you go higher and higher, that is, the, which are the areas higher on the earth's surface, naturally the mountains and the hills, is it not? So, if you go up higher and higher on the face of the earth, what happens if you go higher and higher? The, there also the temperature is decreasing. So, we said early. If you go from equator towards the north, to the south and to the north, the temperature becomes less. The same way, from the face of the earth, if you go higher and higher, if you climb up the mountains, if you climb up the Everest and so on, top of the Everest, the temperature will be very low. So, that is because the air is very become less dense. That's why people who go for climbing Everest, they have to carry oxygen bag, oxygen cylinder they have to carry because there the air pressure is very low and they will not be able to breathe properly. So they have to carry oxygen with them. So, so that is the situation everywhere. If you go higher and higher from the face of the earth, from the surface of the earth, the air becomes less and less dense. It becomes less thick and the pressure is less. Then the hills are therefore colder during summers. So if you go for climbing the hills during the summer, you will realize when you reach on top of the hill, the temperature is low. The temperature is low. So we may think that hills are near to the sun, is it not? Sun is shining on top and then if you climb up the hill, we will feel that we are closer to the sun, therefore we must experience more hot. And thinking that if you climb up a hill on top when you reach, you will realize it is cooler. When you are down, you are feeling more hot. But when you reach on top of the uh, mountains or hills, you feel the temperature is more low. It 
is cool. It is because as we go higher and higher, the temperature decreases. And the pressure and the wind system. Another climate control is the pressure and the wind system. The pressure of the air and the blowing of the wind. That is also affecting the climate of a place. So let's see how they are affecting. So it depends on the latitude and altitude of that place. So it depends on where the wind is blowing. Where is the pressure, more pressure is felt. As we said, as we move from equator to the poles, the pressure is becoming less. Is it not? So here the pressure is low. Here the pressure is high. Here the pressure is low. Therefore, we can say that depending on the pressure of the place and also the altitude of the place, we just now said on mountain top the pressure will be low. So accordingly, the wind also will affect the situation. Thus, it influences the temperature and rainfall pattern. So the wind will affect the affect what affect the temperature influences the temperature and cause rainfall we know that it is because of the wind that the rainfall takes place so rainfall happens because of the wind depending on the air pressure and so on and and thus the sea exerts a moderating influence on climate. So another fact is, another climate control is a distance from the sea. So we learned in the other class, the places that are near to the sea, that is the coastal region, during the day and during the night, they experience somewhat same temperature. But if you go to places that are far away from the sea, like uh, desert regions, you will find during the day the temperature is very high, but during the night the temperature comes down. So there is so much of difference if it is far away from the sea. But the places that are near to the sea, the sea coast, then they will have a lot of variation in the climate compared to other places. They will not have much variation, whether it is day or night, they will not have much same temperature during the day as well as during the night. That is because of the sea. Now, so people experience extreme weather conditions. So, this condition is known as continentality. So, some places, as the distance from the sea increases, so if the Places far away from the sea, as I said, people will experience very extreme weather condition. That means during the day very hot, during the night very cold, extreme weather. So that that that, uh, uh, that phenomenon is called what is it called? It is called the continentality. So that phenomenon of experiencing extreme weather conditions during the day and during the night if the place is far away from the sea that is called continentality so you can underline in your textbook what is continentality so continentality is the extreme weather conditions experienced by the people as they move away from sea to the far the farther they go from the sea the extreme will become the climatic conditions that they experience that is called continentality then ocean currents another another climate control is ocean current the current of the ocean the wind in the ocean that also is affecting the climate of that place so the ocean currents along with onshore winds affect the climate of the coastal areas. So the wind that is coming from the ocean, they will blow into the 
land as well. They will not just go as the sea is over, but they will continue to blow, continue to enter into the land. And for example, any coastal area with warm or cold currents flowing past it will be warm or cool if the winds are on shore. So if the coastal area with warm or cold current. So sometimes the wind that is blowing from the ocean will be warm current, warm wind. Or sometimes it will be cool wind. So if it is a warm wind or warm current, it is blowing, the area that it is blowing, that area will become very warm. If it is a cold wind, then the area that it is blowing, it will become cold. So depending on the nature of the wind if it is a hot wind or warm wind it will turn the place atmosphere also warm if it is a cold wind then it will turn the atmosphere into a cold atmosphere so depending on the type of the ocean current the climate of that place also will be changed then the last climatic control is the relief Relief means we know the shape of the earth. Some places it is low, some places high and so on. So the relief, depending on the relief features. So relief plays a major role in determining the climate of a place. So it has got a very important role in designing the climate of a place. The high mountains act as barriers. So if a place has got very high tall mountains then it will act as a barrier for cold or hot winds so if the mountain is standing straight the wind is coming from there the mountain is blocking the wind whether it is a cold wind or hot wind the mountain will block so that is acting as a barrier or effect like a fence to block the wind and what happens if the mountain blocks the wind they may also cause precipitation if they are high enough. So if the mountains are very high, if it can block the wind completely, then it will cause precipitation. Precipitation means rain. So the wind, if it is a rain bearing wind or the moisture bearing wind, then the mountain will block it and that area will receive rainfall. Then, If it is in the path of rain bearing wind. So this mountain is like Himalaya and so is doing a great role in determining the climate of our place. So the leeward side of the mountains remain dry. So the mountain is there, let us say this is a mountain. The wind comes from here and the mountain is blocking the wind. The wind cannot proceed other side because the mountain is very high and it is blocking it. And therefore what happens? If that wind was a bearing wind, a rain bearing wind, if it is a very dry wind then there will not be rain. But if it was a moisture uh, laden wind, wind carrying the moisture, then the mountain will block it, then this place will have rain. What happens to the other side of the mountain? Will there get rain? No. This side will remain dry because the wind is not passing this side. The mountain is blocking here and this area will have rain. Other side of the mountain will remain dry. So that is one thing that the Himalaya, Great Himalaya is playing in determining the climate of our country. We will learn about it a little later in details. And for today we shall learn about in short how these six the climate controls are playing great role in determining the climate of our country. And, and let us see one question. Let's find out. Let's say it's more. Exercise is given. Find out. So let's see how to what is the reason. Why most of the world's deserts are located in the western margins of continents in the subtropics so in the subtropic you know what is subtropic 
So, <coughs> in the globe, we see there is equator here, and here there is Tropic of Cancer. So, there are two tropics. This is Tropic of Cancer. And here, this also is Tropic. Tropic of Capricorn. So, another is Tropic of Capricorn. So, the places that are beyond these tropics. From here to the other place, the area, Tropic of Cancer, beyond Tropic of Cancer and beyond Tropic of Capricorn, they are called subtropics. So, up to here they are called tropics. From equator to here, it is Tropic of Cancer. From equator to here, it is Tropic of Capricorn. So, beyond this place, that is called subtropics. So, here it will be sub. <coughs> so, we will find in most of the continents, in these subtropics, the places in the western side, they are deserts. Most of the deserts in the world, they are the western margins of the continents in the subtropics. So, in all this area, we will find the deserts in whichever continent there is a desert that will be in the western side. This is western side. The deserts will be found in this western side. What is the reason? Why in the eastern side there is no desert, but in the western side? What? That is a, that is what we are called to find out. So the reason is very simple. What we have learned already. So we said. The rain bearing winds are uh, blowing into the land and they are causing rain, is it not? So here most of the rain bearing winds they are starting from the east. They start from the east and enter into the land. So they start blowing from here and as they enter into the land, they start bringing rain. They bring rain into the land. And they start raining, raining, and as they reach towards the western side, it becomes very dry. All the moisture is over. The wind is carrying moisture, and that's why it is raining. And by the time they reach towards the western side, the moisture is completely over, and the wind becomes a dry wind. And then what happens? Can the dry wind bring rain? No, it cannot. And therefore, the western parts of the subtropic region, they do not receive any rainfall. They receive very little rainfall. That's why some of the areas here, they have turned out to be a desert because of lack of rain. So, if the wind were to start from this side, then all the desert would have been here. So, but here, all the winds are starting from the east. And by the time they reach the west, towards the west, then all the rain is over and they do not receive any rainfall. So that is the reason why most of the deserts are in the western side. In the subtropics, they are in the western side. So remember that, don't forget. That is a fact. If somebody asks you why there is more deserts in the western region, then you will have to explain. Don't just say, I don't know. So, learn all these things nicely and we will study about all the climate controls in little more detail in the coming class. So, thank you for listening. Have a nice day.